Uh, we've been having a little bit of trouble with the trailer. We were kind of battling some brake issues here and there uh, that were intermittent. You know, it's non-CDL trailer, it's not a dual tandem. So the front tire on driver's side was wearing a little bit weird and I kept an eye on it but seemed like it was just barely noticeable and I went on this last trip and then I could notice it more and I knew that I had probably an axle issue just on that side where it, it potentially got bent and I'm not surprised. I mean, you, you put nine or 10,000 pounds on these trailers, it's all confined to over the axles there. That's a lot of weight for these trailers, really. You know, if you've got 12K axles or 15K axles with dual tandems, it's not as big of an issue, right? You can haul more weight than that even. Uh, but with these trailers, and I mean, you know, I have 8K axles on mine and something still happened. So dropped off my trailer two days ago at the Big Tex uh, dealer here local to me in Southern Oregon. And we are just kind of waiting to see what they say. I did not buy the trailer brand new. I bought it from somebody used here. Uh, even though it's a 2023, uh, they barely used it. So I bought it from them. And yeah, unfortunately, we are about 11 months into using the trailer, roughly. We're having brake issues with it. We have a bent axle, most likely. I had to replace all four tires. And honestly, that's kind of a common thing, unfortunately, with big techs. Their tires that they use from factory there are not good tires. So you're, you're probably going to blow a tire, uh, if not all of them. I mean, really. Uh, and you're not really blowing them. What happens is they're just complete junk tires. So you're separating the tread off of them. And that's what happened to me. Uh, all four of them in the summertime, at separate times, the glue heated up, the tread separated from the tire, and it came right off, ripped right off, just like it would a semi, basically. So I had to replace all four of them at separate times. And I went ahead and replaced the spare also. And I got whatever 16 ply tire I could get at the time because I had to load on every time this happened. This is all reasons why I would never buy a big Tex trailer again. I've just had issues with this trailer constantly. I, I fix a lot of stuff myself. Brake issues, you know, di different things like that. So it's in for warranty. Some of the stuff may not be covered by warranty, which is going to cost me out of pocket. Biggest problem though is today is Friday and I dropped it off Wednesday morning. They were going to check on warranty stuff and uh, they were going to start working on it for me. So I, I just left. I called the big tech dealership and they said they're still working on the warranty stuff. You know, this is a few days later, right? You know, this is Friday now. Working on the warranty stuff, they haven't heard back. And even when they do hear back, apparently is going to be a couple of weeks out to fix whatever needs to be fixed on the trailer. So it's like, well, that would have been nice to know since we talked about all of this uh, before I dropped it off. And all you guys told me was, bring it on down here. We'll get it all fixed for you. Apparently what that means is we'll get it all fixed for you at our time. Even though we know that you run a hotshot business and this is your trailer that you use for it, it'll be okay if you don't have it for a month, right? My fault too. I should have asked uh, more questions, but geez, I never expected for these people, you know, to, to think that they could have my trailer for a month. It operates still. Yeah, the tire's wearing a little bit funny. We don't know if it's a bent axle yet. I thought they would have looked at my trailer in the last few days and been like, oh, this is what's going on. But they had me drop it off there and it just sit there. We can't just be out of service for a month and just hope for the best. That's not how this works, so. Hey guys, how's it going? It's a different kind of week for us. We just backed up to the trailer, grabbed the chains and binders out and a few other things, and we're leaving it behind. It's gonna stay at the Big Tex dealership in White City so that it can have all the warranty work done on it, and we're gonna get that completely fixed up and that's gonna go up for sale. I can't wait for that trailer to have all the work done on it. It could be up to a month or longer before I get that trailer back from the sounds of it. And 
that's not something that I can wait for. This is kind of one of those things that can happen out here, guys. You're out there, you're hauling, you know, loads back to back, you're you're making money, and then all of a sudden a few things start happening with the trailer. You notice maybe you have a major issue going on the beginning of it, and you gotta stop at that point. You can't you can't keep running uh, and put put anybody in danger, myself in danger, people around me in danger. Um, once I notice the tire is wearing a little bit funny and it's just one of them, uh, that's a problem and it could lead to a serious problem. And so the trailer goes into the shop immediately and I have to deal with it at that point. So I bought a new trailer. I can't wait a month. This is our income right here. I, I found a trailer. It's all the way over in Missouri. You know, I didn't want to buy another big tax or anything like that. Uh, no offense to big tax, but I'm just not a huge fan if I'm having this I've had problems before with the tires uh, all the factory tires losing the tread on that thing immediately um, I've had brake issues multiple times and now I'm having axle issues and who knows what else is going on brake issues are back and if a trailer is going to do that to you in the first year of owning it then I need to get rid of that trailer. I need a new trailer. I'm not gonna dump all of that stuff off onto somebody else. I'm gonna get the work done to it that needs to be done and then I'm gonna sell it uh, for a fair price. Like I've said before, I own that trailer outright. So I'll lose a little bit of money, but I gotta keep going. I've got this trailer out here. I bought a Lone Star. It's very similar to how the PJs are built. So I got it from Nationwide Trailers. It's a pretty large uh, trailer dealership out in the Midwest. So I'm heading out to Missouri. It's a 40 foot uh, GVWR on it is 15,860 or 680, one of those two. Uh, so it's still a non-CDL trailer, which is a bummer. I didn't want to get a new trailer until I got my new setup after I got my CDL finished, but I don't have a choice right now. I've got to go get a new trailer so I can stay on the road and make money. You know, otherwise, even though I've built everything up, I make good money out on, out on the road, I have, you know, good loads that I take, that would be the end of this company. You know, just leasing somebody on recently, they're going to be starting, uh, you know, their first load here uh, in just the next few days, really. I have other obligations, you know, to him, to his family, to my family, now I got to keep going. So. If we have to drive to Missouri to pick up a trailer, that's what we're going to do. Found other 40-foot trailers that were closer by, uh, but they had pull-out ramps, or they were 35-footers, or it was a Diamond C, so it was super expensive. You know, all of that stuff, I can only get what I can get, you know, where I'm registered at. If I'm going to buy another trailer, it's going to be a 40-foot trailer, it's going to have mega ramps, and this time, I got the sliding track on the side with uh, the winches that are already uh, built into the track every four feet, which is nice. You know, now I can slide the winches on the side of the trailer for the four inch straps and they're not going to be fixed to the bolted on positions that I put on the big tacks. So now I have the ability to slide those down the, the track on the side, which is really nice. but. There are differences in this trailer. This one has 7K axles. The other one I had had 8K axles. The trailer I had had 16 ply tires on it. This one does not. So I'm having to sacrifice some things to get a trailer right now. Normally I would get the next size up with 8K axles and I would have the upgraded 16 ply tires put on it and pay a little bit extra and have it derated uh, so that I'm still at 26,000 pounds or under but I don't have time to do all of that. They didn't have anything like that for me that I could pick up that's available. So I purchased this trailer. It's gonna do the job for what I need uh, until I get my CDL finished, so we're gonna go get it. I did quite a bit of research on Lone Star trailers, had some pretty darn good reviews and everything. Uh, they're not a common trailer that I see out there, but you know maybe they are in the Midwest and East Coast or something since it is a Midwest uh, you know, an over dealership. Uh, they don't have any dealerships for Nationwide. 
uh, over in the western states. So that could be why I don't see them over here. I'm hoping that's why. It looks like it's been put together well, and it definitely looks like it's been <laughs> built better than a big text. And I don't know, I shouldn't say, I mean, maybe it's just bad luck on this one trailer. It's not like I've had multiple big text trailers. It is what it is. I had bad luck with this trailer. I'm going to buy a new one. So I have to drive 2,000 miles to St. Louis right now to pick up this trailer because it was gonna be $5,100 to have it delivered, $250 a mile. So I was like, dude, do you need anybody to haul your trailers for you? Because I'll do all of them for $250 a mile. What? But anyways, so that's the delivery charge. I don't wanna pay that much. It'll cost me about $1,000 in fuel to go there and pick up the trailer and go back home if I don't pick anything up at all. So we got this trailer for a little over 16,000, thousand bucks in fuel. All right, but yep, we're on our way. That's why I was, uh, I stopped to get the chains and binders out of the trailer. I've got everything in the back of the truck. On the way over there, I'm gonna look for a load to bring me back to the West Coast. The hard part is, can't just go buy a trailer, hook up to it and haul freight. I have to go get an annual inspection done with this trailer before I wanna haul anything. Footage of uh, driving and everything 
and I need to flip this camera around and, and get some of this through the salt flats. All right, we'll see you guys in a few hundred. So we're at Nationwide Trailers in Wentzville, Missouri. Like I said, we made this trip out here for a new trailer. That was never the intention, but we had to make a pivot. We had to get a new trailer with uh, the, the other trailer having all the warranty work and them keeping it for over a month. So this is what we wound up coming to grab. It's a 2023 brand new Lone Star. It's a 40 foot. So the difference, like I said, in this trailer from the last one is, of course, we get the extra five feet, but this does not have 16 plies on it. I'll probably swap my 16 plies over to this one uh, just because I, I prefer that by far, but we'll get the extra five feet, so that's great. And this has 7K Dexter axles on it. The other one has 8Ks. That's okay too. You know, I, I like the setup on these a lot more. I mean, look at that. You get to put the rear plate way up higher. The LED lighting is much better on these trailers, in my opinion. The setup on this is significantly better. Look at the bar is right here versus all the way across. And you've got this, the latch. So you don't have to put a strap across the whole back of the trailer anymore. And then the best part, Look at that, sliding winches on the track. So we've got three in the back. We've got a fixed one right there, so that's four. And then five more. So that's nine. I usually need more than that with the stuff that I pick up uh, local if it's a fuller load. So, you know, we might have to use a couple of two inch straps in the in between, you never know. Uh, it's not the end of the world, not, not a big deal. But look at this, much better. I mean, this is a way more heavy duty uh, handle here for the jack uh, system than Big Tex has by a mile. You've got the full width um, toolbox right here, which I mean, you guys know if you've seen Big Tex or you have one, um, they leave like a foot on each side uh, that, that they don't use for some odd reason. And look, I can hang my chains right there. It's got a chain rack. So, I don't know, you guys tell me, isn't that significantly better? The only problem I see right now is that this does not have a place to lock it. So, what does that mean? What is this hole for? Does it? do something different that I'm not aware of. I don't know. We're going to have to keep an eye on that. We're going to have to figure out how to lock that because it does need to be locked. That's a nice seven pin, probably G70 chains. I would imagine breakaway does not have a hook on it. I'll just put one on there. That's fine. 
I'll put my lock on this guy. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. It's got the, let's see. Well, I can't tell how many uh, lights go down the sides, but yeah, we'll have to take a look. It's kind of got a similar step here to a big text. You can just grab right onto the trailer or onto the handle right there. I like that it kicks out right here on the big Texas. This isn't here. You know, that's just a open space basically. From what I can tell, significantly better build than a big Tex so far. Don't have, I might have to add a few lights. So we've got this, this one here and then a small one up front and then the two markers on the front of the trailer on each side but that's about it you know yes this is what marks the halfway point on the trailer but i would prefer to have more markers i'll go on ahead and put a stain over this wood just like i did on my other one it always it looks really good when you do that i used a gray sealant uh, stain and it really protected the wood quite a bit I'll use gray again and it'll it'll make it to where everything's gray but yep nationwide trailers guys took care of me on this one I was able to come pick it up uh, right away which I appreciate very much you know I applied for the financing on it uh, got it immediately paid my deposit my down payment on it which I, I just paid 15% down on it and I started heading this way to come pick it up he had the paperwork uh, waiting for me which was awesome uh, so I was able to you know I was really able to just go walk right in and I was in there for five minutes uh, I signed everything looked over everything and I'm hooking up the trailer right now they've got a ton of trailers here guys even if you're in for like a utility or a dump trailer They've got a ton of their Lone Stars over there, dual tandem and single tandems. You know, they've got the PJs. And then, of course, they've got some really cool Lone Star uh, tilt beds on them. You know, the hydraulics for hauling containers. And you're, I mean, those pay really well you're, if you're able to roll one of those out. They, they cost more money for those trailers, of course. But, you know, I see those on the board all the time where you've got to do a residential delivery on a container and it pays like five bucks a mile. Yeah, that might come in handy. All right, time to hook it up. Here we are, guys. We're all hooked up. Look at that beast. Nice 40-footer. This is a really nice trailer, guys. I mean, you... I think you'd be hard-pressed to find another trailer that's built this well, from what I can tell so far, at least you know, uh, for a better price. I mean, really, I mean, like I said, you've got these guys on both sides and they're not the little cheapies either. I mean, that's on there. I mean, damn. Winch is on the slide. I mean, that's, that's perfect. You even got lights. He just showed me this too. You even got lights under here, turn on. So I can mess with stuff in the back of my truck, which it's completely a mess right now because I got to put everything in the back uh, in this toolbox. And then you've got another one. You got three lights right up there on a switch to where you can see in your toolbox, which he showed me. He fixed this here to where you can just put a lock in and make it to where you can't open this. So that's how it does lock. So that is solid. Man, we were messing with the, the jack here and it just goes up and down so smooth and that big text did not it really didn't you know so this is what we got guys a lone star i think it's an ld 40. um yeah great great price on it great trailer nationwide really hooked me up this guy here uh that i was dealing with uh, I dealt with him from the very beginning. I didn't get passed off to anybody or anything like that. He hooked me up from the whole way. Um, you know, so I really appreciate it. His name's Michael Butler. 
here at, uh, you know, it's not St. Louis, but it's their St. Louis uh, facility in Wentzville, Missouri. So you need a trailer, you need anything at all, uh, service work, if you have a PJ or a Lone Star and you're coming through this area, uh, or you're looking for a new trailer, come see Michael Butler. He hooked me up, guys. Good guy. I recommend him, really. All right, let's get on the road. Hey guys, let's see, yesterday I went about probably like 250 miles. Today I ran probably about 700 miles. So it has almost a thousand miles behind me right now. Empty of course, but yeah, I mean this trailer, it pulls really well. It's built very similar to a PJ. The neck, everything is all built the exact same way. I love this trailer. It's awesome. I mean, it pulls way better than the big techs. The brakes on it are significantly better. It's heavier than the last trailer. I went through the scales. I was not happy about it at all. It looks like I'm only gonna be able to put about 9,500 pounds on the trailer now before I could put like 10,350, which means this trailer weighs about 800 pounds more uh, than the other trailer. It's five feet longer, so makes sense. But you know, this trailer is uh, just temporary. And when I say temporary, it very well could last for six months. I really don't know. It's just until I get through with the uh, CDL, that way I can upgrade. I was hoping that it wouldn't weigh that much more um, and I would still be close to 10, but I'm not. So we're capped at 9,500 pounds to put on the trailer. That's tough, running on CDL. That's gonna be a problem for me running through the spring and summer. A lot of the stuff I do doesn't come close to those weights, but I don't wanna have any restrictions. And that's why getting your CDL before you do this and running with a full CDL setup is really the best way to go. Running out to Missouri and so far back, I'm in on my way back, I'm in Laramie, uh, Wyoming right now on my way home. I've seen a couple hundred hot shots out on the roads. That's just here, that's just right now. That's just the ones that I saw. There's thousands and thousands of hot shots out here now. It's flooded. It's past the point of flooded. Yeah, don't limit yourself. Do not run non-CDL from the gate um, and find your own customers uh, immediately if you wanna try to do this. But yeah, I mean, I've already put it in this video right here of what happened with my other trailer. I have no updates on that trailer. These guys aren't giving me updates at the big text dealership. Um, the communication is full blown shit. So then now that I, they know I went and bought a new trailer, they're not gonna be in any hurry. So it's a good thing I own it outright and I don't have a payment on it. Otherwise I'd be way more upset about it, but sorry I haven't put out any videos uh, for a little bit. I haven't hauled anything for a couple of weeks. You know, it was my son's birthday and then I ran down to Stockton to meet with the guy that leased on and, you know, go over stuff with him. Got home, dealt with, you know, the warranty stuff with the trailer, found out the bad news, found a trailer, purchased it, and then had to take off to Missouri. And now I'm trying to get home to my twin girl's uh, birthday. They're turning 17 uh, this Wednesday and I won't haul anything until after their birthday. Anyways, I'm at the truck stop here in Laramie, Wyoming. Uh, I stayed here on the way uh, to Missouri, so I'm going to throw my shades up, man. All my window shades, weather techs, um, get everything ready, um, run inside and grab some food, and uh, yeah, I'm going to call my wife and kids and chat for a while and throw some Netflix on. See you guys in the morning when I'm heading out. All right, guys.
started out in Laramie, Wyoming this morning, uh, and I'm in Winnemucca, Nevada. So I was able to run through uh, Wyoming, Utah, and then a good chunk of Nevada today so that uh, from here I just shoot straight north up into Oregon and then over to back to Rogue River. So I only left myself with about 400 miles for tomorrow, so I'll leave in the morning and get home. I'm here in Winnemucca. I pulled into the pilot. I want to go inside and grab some food. Uh, I've been driving for uh, like 750 miles today, so I'm all done. All right, we'll see you tomorrow.